I'm so I remember, excited. I remember there was one PS1 Yu-Gi-Oh game that was that I really liked. I forgot what it was called though. Well, today's a new day and age of Yu-Gi-Oh. I like how it's a hundred percent speed, sixty frames, but this is legit the pace of the game. Like, it sputters from time to time, but to be honest, I ran three discs of this into the ground. Like, there were so many games I grinded. This is probably your second most played game. This is definitely my second most played game. With, without a doubt, Budokai 2 was it. It was Budokai 2 and this, and then it was Tenkaichi 3, just the, the need to cure boredom when these wouldn't load. Like... My, like, my family always thought it was weird, but my father would always, like, he bought me three fucking copies of each of these games for, like, my birthday one year. And it, and it was funny, because they're like, why'd you buy him the same game? And he's like, and then he literally kept all of the games I burnt down, which was, like, another, like, three or four of each one. And he's like, he only plays these games. And I was like... Wow, and it was funny because I had all the covers. Like there were like Did two or three covers. Did you ever burn through Genji's or no? I think I started to to glitch it a little bit. I definitely like when he bought that. I was like, oh yay, cool. Because I was like, yeah. And he's like, oh well, it's a summer game, and he got it for me like just for like a present, like just a gift one time. And it and it was nice because you know stuff. But I know you said you went through at least, like, nine copies of Budokai 2, at least, if I recall. I went through a fuck ton. When you looked at Budokai 3, that was 27 bucks. I was like, what the fuck? Well, the thing was, I never really... You don't really see PS2 games above, like, 20 bucks, right? Mm-hmm. But yet, some of those nostalgic few just <laughs> say fuck that number, though. They do. Especially nowadays. Hello everybody, I am Hereticos. Welcome to a Yu-Gi-Oh! series of Capsule Monsters Coliseum. I will be joined by Uriah for a portion of this, if not all of it. What's up, guys? So for this, I'm going to do one playthrough. And then if I do bonus playthroughs, it'll just be random episodes of me going through it. And I will record the whole series when I go through it. Um, so I can't really say there's much of a premise of story, other than, uh, it's not even like the Capsule Monsters Coliseum that the show premiered. This one's more of a chess-based oriented, uh, new style of, like, a way to bring Yu-Gi-Oh! forward. Because, like, there was, like, Dungeon Dice Monsters and things like that. And it's, this is pretty much just a big tournament spin-off of Capsule Monsters. The closest game like this, is, even though they're not 100% alike, is freaking Duels of Roses, even though it's completely different. They're both board style, though. The only similarities is board style. And type. The types matter. And I would and, say types probably. Then. And um, I don't know, I don't remember if Capsule Monsters, uh, do they have a field advantage? You can, yes they do. Territory and, advantage, yeah. And, and you can make have one. That too. And you can make one. I don't know about that in Duels of Roses because I never beat the game, but you there is a territory advantage. I don't know if you can make one, though. Well, you can manipulate it to do it, kind of. This one's more of, like, manipulation to do it. Entered name will be used for save data and versus mode. Are you sure? Fuck yeah. I am Hereticos. Okay, so... Creating a symbol. For a quick start, play with the preset settings by selected purchase starter kit... Select Build Custom to create your own original arrangement. So, symbols... I, like, the game will explain all of this. But I'm going to build a custom one. Just so I can explain everything. Because there's only one thing in the symbol that matters. Other than the points that you manually put in. Because if you were to buy a symbol. You would just basically buy one that's at a preset. Of, like, just kind of beginner's guide to derping. So a symbol's attribute affects all of your monsters. Select an attribute that will give your monsters an advantage in battle. 
So this is basically going to be our type, like our special type. And there's dark, light, thunder, wood, wind, earth, and water, and fire. We are going to be the bestest of best elements. And sadly, we are not going to take our calling color. We are going to be the best element. And we are going to be wind. So, so early game wind is the best element All in your game around, down. theoretically all game around, wind is like the strongest because the it's it literally only gets countered by wood. And wood is not very common, I'm assuming. I mean, it's within insects and stuff, but it doesn't like all other characters kind of use everything, and there's only a few from the actual series that you would see coming, unless they have a wood creature, but then you pretty much like just beat its ass. So we're gonna be a wind. Um, the design is, I believe this selects your. It's like a base, but I think it shows the kind of variety that your. Um, it's the variety of creatures from your pool. Um, I usually just go with like wing. Only because it looks badass, and I never went into a like a like a depth to really want like a bunch of stuff. Like I never to a T like grinded this game to be I'm busted AF. But we are gonna choose something a little little badass. And we're gonna choose needle. Because needle implies the bug. Because there's eight elements and there's eight of these, and each one kind of represents one of them. And I don't really remember too much of what they represent, but we're going to go with Needle. And then we choose a color, which I also don't remember. But we are going to go and represent with blue here, with Cyan. Now we must assign 200 points. So we have Monster Points which will be the points that we use to select monsters within the value that they give us. It also allows us to move and play monsters while in combat. Action points... It's been a while. I don't use it. I don't remember it. And power points applies to the in-game combat stuff as well. I just remember maxing out... Oh, wait. Wait. Oh, power points is the HP of a, of your of a unit. So in our case, the power points of our wind tower would be 160. Um AP action points, I believe that's what you get at the start of every round, and then you can increase that, but I always max out uh monster points. Like the most you can have is 999 to start and points are not valued at it. But we're not going to just abruptly max it out. Mm, no, no, no. No, 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 my f mine Freud. We are going to get to a even number of 550. And then we're going to go to here. And we're going to take this down to 150. Man, I'm looking forward to this series. You sound like you're excited for it. I am excited. And then we're going to take our HP to 360. So that way everything's kind of balanced. Normally I would just have more monster points in AP. But I kind of want to just play my cards right here. Let me take this down to another common denominator of 300. And then we'll give ourselves more monster points. There we go. Okay, once the game starts, you can't change your simple settings. Are you satisfied with the settings? Yes. So, another thing about this game that I'll branch into after we get a little bit of a tutorial. <laughs> Grandpa. Ah, I, thought you would come, you here. I really forgot that what they that they just kind of like talk and I'm going to try to talk between it like I'm going to I'm going to try to talk between it because copy you're going to you're gonna try to talk over the mind voice of Dan Green I'm sorry Danny 
<laughs> Sorry, I know it's legendary, but I don't want to get copyrighted because of your amazingness. <laughs> or put in the comments and just put a thumbs up or some shit that I could use your voice for this series without getting ruined. But basically, Grampy over here brought us some creatures that we could use. See? It's not even his grandpa, but that's his grandpa. <laughs> said I was giving you these for free. Oh, what a cunt! I mean, I'll exchange them for well, 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 I can tell you right now, not a, no, we got it. We got to change this episode to not kid friendly. Monster points. Monster points. This is a kid friendly game, and now you got to You can earn monster points when battling. But I haven't battled even once yet. But I haven't battled. Didn't you just create a symbol that gave you monster points? We did. Just create a symbol that gave us monster points. To start with. <laughs> Let me give you some tips. Give me some tips. Let's hear. Into light, dark, fire, water, earth, wood, wind, and thunder. Wow! <laughs> In other words, each monster has a wow. Taking it with the curiosity of a child. Has a different advantage. Advantages and disadvantages. Oh, so keep up with this. Because the way he explains it, I thought it was only going to show it, and then it showed the whole chart. But get you this. Don't think you can remember that. Are you ready? Here we go. Oh. Light is strong against dark, and dark is strong <laughs> against earth. Why wouldn't they just make it a proper cycle instead of doing it like that? Is strong against wood, and water is strong against fire. Earth is strong against thunder, and wood is strong against wind. Okay. Wind what is, is strong against water. Strong against and water. Thunder is strong against light. That's it. Well, okay. guys. That's it. That's if the type difference. If you remember these relationships, it will increase your chances for victory. So, I got interrupted, but... So <laughs> basically, the, uh, like, the way he explains this, like, this one, this one, and then he jumps to the other side, he's like, that one, that one. I'm glad he shows you this, because it basically is common sense, like, water beats fire, fire beats wood... Wood is, like, thick to wind, so it wouldn't knock over. Wind just blows water out of the way. You know? That makes sense. And then you got Earth is stronger than Thunder. Thunder beats light. Light is better than dark. And I don't understand the dark-to-earth ratio. But that's just the way it works. <laughs> so. So only having monsters of a single attribute is dangerous. It is very dangerous. You learn quickly. <laughs> You should always take your opponent's attribute into account. That's another important point to remember. Well, the rest is up to you. I understand. Can you show me the monsters? Yes, show Dan Green the monsters. Okay, so let's see what we get here. We get scorpions, we get a fucking kaiju, we get a tentacle monster. Um, so let me go to the top and just with the happy lover explain it because this is the basic way to explain this. So every creature, including your symbol, will have a level. You can level up creatures to the max of nine. Nope, hold on. Lover. <laughs> so every creature levels up to nine. They'll gain experience throughout. Um, the AP increases the amount of action points you can have in a turn. So that's that was what that that number represents. The power points is the health of a monster, and then it has an attack and defense. At the bottom, you'll notice a movement a movement ratio either in a plus or X or however. 
and a number. That number indicates the amount of tiles that will move in those kind of directions highlighted yellow, and its attack will also imply the amount of spaces in front of it. So happy lovers will move in four, but only attack to the closest one in front of it. So we will actually buy um, one, or we'll buy two happy lovers. So like Skell Angel has like a plus movement, but it attacks in a every other around it. So it kind of has like a box attack around it. Now, Karibos move in an X and attack at a plus two in front of it or on the sides. I'm actually going to buy as many Karibos as we find because they have... Eventually, monsters will get abilities. And I'll go into that later. Exodia. We'll buy a Firegrass. Firegrass is good. I mean... Yeah, I, I guess it's good. Kind of attacks on an X, but... Mechanical Schnell. We'll buy you because you're powerful. We'll buy a Root Water because I know you're going to be useful. We'll buy a Dolphin for the sake of Dolphining. I know these are good. Definitely know those are good. Droll Birds are fucking great. Uh, Bappy Baby Dragon. dragon. Bappy <laughs> Dragon. Uh, Pettit Moth. This thing. So oh, hold on. So, so how do you make Thousand Dragon? Do you do it the same way, or how does that work? So, later into the game, alongside abilities and whatnot, there will be... Um, you'll be able to perform different actions with different creatures. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Well, I guess it might have been. Okay, so we could still buy another creature. I do want to buy the Baby Dragon. So, let's get rid of a Happy Lover. I think it was 89, actually. So, we'll probably want to get rid of... Uh, Firegrass, maybe? Yeah, we'll want to get rid of a Firegrass. Because one of those should be fine. I want to kind of stack a lot of Wind Units, too. Because Wind Units are just good. So, we will buy that. So, back to my original uh, theory. So, they'll get abilities and things that they could do later on. Some creatures involve a proper, like, not not a not a fusion series technique, but it will it will give you an option of fusion. Creatures have to be at a X level, and they have to have either another creature or just them on their own. Like, I'll kind of spoil. Actually, I could probably show you within time here. So, creatures will either fuse or evolve. And then that'll determine um, what they do. And I'm not going to spoil anything, but some pieces or things that you find, hint, will determine what a creature evolves or fuses with. And you'll kind of see that as we go, because if anybody doesn't know the series, I don't want to just kind of throw out every evil secret that there is, or just kind of common knowledge to people who play the game, which, not to undermine them, but, you know, it'd be like that sometimes. Hey, you. I've been waiting for you. You've been waiting at this place Joey. for me? Hi, Joey. Wonderful. This broken oh, yeah. accident. Wow. I'm not holding anything back. Well, I'm glad you're the tutorial. Because that makes sense, eh? <laughs> we could poopy dookie on this man so hard. So, the, traditionally, the game starts with an eight cards, and it's one to eight. Whoever gets the highest gets to choose whether you go first or second. And I actually don't remember if it's more important to go first or second. I think it's important to go first. I think. Typically. Would you be disappointed if your first opponent was Kaiba? It wouldn't make sense. 
Oh, it's always nice to go second, day. typically. So here's okay. where the game comes in. I'll select my monsters to play with. Wait a sec. What's wrong, Yugi? There's a limit on which monsters you can use. Yes, 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 yes. So I'll explain that and for the them. Cannot <laughs> I see. So, yes, 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 <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Don't want to get yes. demonetized by the end green. <laughs> Stop it, Danny. <laughs> so, we have monster point limit of 270. The monster point value for each monster will indicate how many monsters we could choose. But next to that number, there will be maximum deployment O of 6. That means we can only have up to 6 units. Now, one of the unique things about going second is if we press square, we can go to map, right? If we go second, we can, we can view our opponent's capsules. Meaning, just based off the element of looking at them, we already know we would just want to use water along with their symbol. So, given that knowledge, I mean, you know, just use our one and only. Knowledge is power? Knowledge is power, and learning is just half the battle. Demonetized. <laughs> uh, and then we'll throw in the pet mouth. Um, we could probably throw in two monsters. We could throw in a, We can have six of six, but to be honest, I'm pretty fucking confident with what we got going. Um, Happy Lover would be good. What about Karibo? I already have Karibo in. We need to max those fuckers out. Alright, we'll, we'll throw in Baby Dragon. Baby Dragon? Baby Dragon! Alright. So, monsters will gain XP as long as they live to the end. So, with our symbol, we have 300 HP, no attack, but we have an amount of defense. Wind units typically have quite a bit of defense. Um, so basically, if he's going to be here, I'm not going to put all my shit over here because that's going to take forever. We just want to, you know, we got that whole blue territory to place. Um, you always want a manual to place. That way you can predict your first amount of movement with each creature, right? And then you want to take theirs into account. So you know he moves and attacks in a plus formation. So I want to keep that in mind when moving units of an advantage or disadvantaged type. And this is basically what we call in D&D as well, called metagaming. <laughs> so, Ooh, no good to metagame. Ooh. So because I know that each of these move within a two, and then if I'm not mistaken, our dolphin... Uh, moves in a three format. Yeah, it moves in three. It means when we're placing our Karibo, we could place it where he would move diagonally to in front or just behind our dolphin. So this is one of those moments where it's like placement will be key. And then we're going to place you behind. So that'll give us a three line. And then because I left this spot open for a wind attribute, because, you know, wind, wind OP ish, you know. We've placed all of our monsters. Placement will be key. Blood will be ours. For the Republic. It's time Correct. To start. So now our action points come into play. So we have 150 action points, and every turn... Stop demonetizing me! Damn it! Didn't do anything. So, like Magic the Gathering, you have to summon your creatures, which cost action points, but give you action points. So what you summon first will also be very imperative to what you're going to do. So we notice it costs 30 to release. The AP is 30, so we'll lose 30, but we'll get plus 56 from releasing Creepo. Our max AP we can get in-game is based off of our symbols max AP that we leveled up earlier. So now you see why each of those are kind of a, um, a very important kind of thing. Because now I'll get 206 next turn. Now, kind of like in Magic, when you summon a creature, it has a summoning sickness. It cannot move the turn it's summoned. 
um, and any points that you have left at the end of your turn will be carried over. Which is super nice, because we need all the points we can get sometimes. Here I go. go ahead! And he has 140. <laughs> yeah, they don't really give that many AP. But he was able to summon enough of them that shit goes down. Here I go! Boo -doo -doo -doo. Hey! Right now you saw the AP increase, right? Yeah. What? <laughs> yes, you are correct. <laughs> I like how he's like. Oh, yeah. I like how he's like. What? Yes, you're, you are correct. It says AP on the screen. There's a number. Oh my. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So now we come into the game where now it only costs. Now he has the attack and defense. So now it's thirty, no matter what, to move them. Which, my rule of thumb is, if you were able to release them that turn, you should be able to move them the following. Its ability decreased. Bro, that terrain is not good for your terrain. If the terrain is up, but if the ter yeah. So, that's the other thing. The direction and spot of each unit kind of changes. So, since he went to Earth, he, like, went to neutral territory. Whereas, if he's in water... He would have gotten, like, a shit ton. Uh, there's a button. Yeah, here it is. So the map will show you when dark and light it favors, and the land form itself is within earth and wood. And then, as I said before, if you had enough to move them, you should have enough to summon them. So 300, I believe we put as our max as well. So we can't exceed that amount. And the only reason I try to max out monster points is just so you have more variety to select from any amount of monsters. Now this is where it's going to get good. So, as you can tell, if we move forward, we can't attack him. But he attacks and moves in a 2, so 1-2, one, 1-2. Two, one, two. We don't want to move. But Karibo can. Karibo can move right here. Actually, what we're gonna do is... Yeah, we'll move Karibo here. Because that'll give me opportunity. And we'll kind of, like, move the Pettit Moth in a little bit. Just to kind of get that kite going. So, I'll kind of show you. Like, right here, it's just plus attack, minus defense. In the water, he gets all around, like, uh, ass whooping stance. We could also move our symbol into play, which it moves kind of like a king in chess. It's just a one one block around. Rut row. Rut row, more skeletons. And then this is the map. Every map will have a scenario where it changes a little bit. This map oh. sinks a little bit. Um, I believe it sinks two stages, and then it'll re-raise. Wait, does they give a... When it, when it sinks, does it give water types an advantage? If I'm in the water. Okay. Which, you know, it'll... I believe it sinks one more level. If not, that's as much as it sinks. I don't really remember. I didn't really care. <laughs> but what we are gonna do? Are we gonna fuck someone's day up? We go on poopy dookie. So this is how damage works. But before we do that, it's a bad spot for our dragon if we can't get anybody in there, right? Because he'll get attacked twice, and we don't want that. Because fire reapers have a lot of attack. So we want to make sure that if we could KO this one, I move Karibo there. And then hopefully he doesn't... Because this one can't do anything no matter what. So it's going to be getting the right creatures to the right spot. So since we have advantage, this should do just about as much. And then battle animations can be turned off or on. 
I'm gonna have... I'll have them on for this battle. After that, I'm turning them off. Because it looks badass, and it looks cool as shit, but it takes too much time. Like, it would take forever if you had to sit through this every time. Maybe if it's, like, a special creature. Like, one that's, like, really badass, I'll show you it for the first time, but... After that, I'm just gonna kinda... Do my thing. What, for, like, Dark Magician and a blue ass? Yeah, you know, like, the basics. Basics of the basics. And then this will destroy his monster. And I like how they face each other, too. They're like, hello. <laughs> hello, friend. He's a, he looks like a Digimon. Jesus Christ. Uh-oh. Oof. Couldn't handle the heat. Creatures will get XP for attacking, but they'll get the most for destroying a piece. Less, you... Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Brooklyn Boy. Thanks, Mr. J. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to put him in a precarious situation. Like, he can only attack this one. He can move this one and attack the dragon as well. But I don't know if he kills off of two. And just to add a little bit of craziness, I'm going to add in uh, Karibo. Also, if you ever like accidentally click off, to end your turn, you'll just press anywhere on the map. And then you can have um, a list of stuff to do. I'm, not gonna give up. All right, I'm glad you're not giving up. It, would be, it wouldn't be as fun. Well, He's you attacking. like to break people? Oh, shit. Oh, I turned off the animation. Then let's get started. He's killing the Karibo! <laughs> you sound saddened by this. If that's all the damage you, you can deal, deal, then my monster will, will not fall. And then we taunted him, and he done did us dirty. Let's watch the Karibo get annihilated, shall we? Your pin cushion. What the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> what does that mean? Like, what? What, what <laughs> does that mean? Your pin cushion. You sound like you're offended. I'm gonna make him pay for it. He looks fine to me. Well, you, you don't like being called a pin cushion? You were doing better than I thought, Joey. He killed a Karibo, man. You're doing better than I thought. You didn't expect him to be able to kill the Karibo? <laughs> I didn't either. I'll use all my skills Damn, the throwing some shade. I don't know what you're talking about. Alright, you. I like the uh, two attack thing. I'm waiting until I can turn off that animation thing. Because, I mean, I like it. It's just... I don't... I like to do things quickly-ish. Do it. Do it. Do it for the Bam. side. Well, that's more of the Fire Reapers thing. Like, and the, and the great thing about this game is it takes really underused creatures and just kind of, like, makes them usable. It just makes them viable. Now, the only reason I'm not attacking him with that, it's just because the pet it mouth will. <laughs> Even though it'd be at a disadvantage. That's the one creature I'm trying to level up. Dolphin! <laughs> ah, this isn't looking good. No way it ain't. Ain't looking good for Mr. Brooklyn. Let, yeah, look, that only does 50 damage. This creature naturally has 100 damage to it. But it just gets poopy dookie done because it's out of it, out of its type. I mean, it is a pet mom.
Easy win. Uh, okay. It's a beautiful it's day. Two outs. I gotta make my move now or it's over. Yeah, I don't really think you have a move. You got one creature to your name. <laughs> I feel like Tristan would have been a better tutorial guy. Eh. I mean, the first five battles are theoretically a tutorial. It's just, this is the one where they explain AP, MP, and that's it. They don't really explain the PowerPoint thing. It's kind of self-explanatory. And then I know every couple of rounds that the um the map changes, so I think at the end of his it, it'll change again. Oh, he's attacking the dolphin! I'm gonna turn this off. Just so we can get through this, because we already know what the Fire Reaper does. <laughs> he moved his symbol. <laughs> One spot. Do I kill the symbol, or do I kill his Fire Reaper? So, the two ways to win the game. You wipe out all your opponent's pieces, or you beat the shit out of their symbol. <laughs> Sometimes, the only way to win, in very few rounds, like two of them, you you would probably want to beat the fuck out of the symbol. And we can't... You gonna move the dolphin to the water? <laughs> I mean, we could do two things here. We could kill his Fire Reaper, because we have just enough movement on both of them to do it. And this map is very biased, like, to typing. Like, holy shit. Well, it, it, yeah, I wouldn't say biased. Like, he does 160 instead of that 140. But if we go up here, and we attack his symbol, you know, we kill that too. And the best way to disgrace a man is you fuck up their symbol. Because, what do I need to kill the fiery before? I get XP no matter what. That's not even funny. <laughs> man, that's not even Yeah, it's pretty fucking funny, Joe. <laughs> But is it funny when it happens to you? It, uh, you? We don't talk about that. Shut up, people. <laughs> this will finish you. This will finish him. Finish him. Finish him. Shazam. Ah, I guess this is the end of the line. Yep, right in the beginning. Well, <laughs> look at us, we did it! Victory, player. How does it feel to shit on a man's day? Oh, uh, the Karibo is the saddest moment, though. But Joey, you fought valiantly. You did fight valiantly, even though like the Karibo was the only tragedy. I think I've had the perfect word for him. He called him a dweeb. I mean... Oh, shit. He leveled up. So, usually when a creature levels up, a variety of its stats will go up, like symbol AE rate, uh, landform AE, and map AE rate. And then its defense is going up, so... There's no reason you wouldn't want to level up a creature. There really isn't. But, you know. Also, at the end of combat, there are two special things that go on. You earn monster points, which allows you to buy uh, more creatures, very clearly. But you earn experience even after that, which is how your symbol levels up. So every 100 points levels up a creature. And then you get to select um, a couple creatures from your opponent. My god, I bet if there was a symbol of a bat, you would choose the symbol of the bat. Symbol of the bat? Hey, what's I, I'm, I'm saying if there was a bat symbol, you'd probably choose that. Why would I choose the bat symbol? <laughs> Never mind. That means... I just defeated you. So basically, they're explaining there's uh, four areas and five people in each one. Thanks, Joey. That's a yeah. Beat that butt. You wouldn't be the Batman. A new path. A new path. I don't know what the new path is. So basically, it says once we beat all four areas, a new path but opens we're up. We're on our own road right now. That's no right. And we'll do it together. Together. Yeah. Yeah! The power of friendship. The power of bullshit! <laughs> I mean, friendship! It already wasn't a kid-friendly thing. But that's where we'll end this episode, just because we're 31 minutes in. 
Also, this will show you and keep track of playtime and then the amount of capsules that you have for each element. So currently we have one of each at least. So, alright everybody, I am Hereticus, joined by Uriah of Gold Colony. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell icon to be notified on all future uploads, and we will see you in the next episode. Peace! Peace.